Hi, my name's Johnny, and now my mouth is drier than a nun's. Hi, my name's Johnny, and today I thought we could do something a little bit different. We're not looking at anything new today, casting back to my second ever review. And that was of my Squire Classic Vibe P base. Click up in the cards if you want to go and check that one out. So young, so naive, so hairy. So I have owned the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Precision Base for, ooh, it was January of 2020. So I've owned this base for coming up to a year and a half now. It's been one of the main consistent bases that I've had on this channel. Now, if you know me, you know that I get bored quite quickly with instruments, which is really sad. And so I've gone through a couple of changes with this bass to rejuvenate it, give it a kiss of life and bring it back from the dead roller coaster of emotions with this bass from absolutely loving it to uh, going off it a bit playing other basses a bit more and then coming back to it for remembering why i love it and then uh, doing the same and each time i've kind of done some changes to it to kind of adapt it to my needs and wants at the time to uh, keep it there in my consciousness if you've been following the channel we've We've changed the pick guard twice. First off from the Torque to Gold and now to the Mint. We changed the pickups from stock ones to Fender Originals and then into the EMG Giza Butlers. And now we have gone from round wounds to flat wounds. And even adding in a bit of sponge underneath the bridge for that really vintage flat wound sound. So this is kind of a three pronged video. It's the first bass I've actually owned that has flats on it. We're kind of revisiting the Squire P bass, seeing if I still like it over a year later. And we're looking at how the EMG geezer butlers you know meant for high output and distortion and those kind of gnarly tones how it handles the more vintage side with some flat wounds on there what will the title of this video be who knows so i suppose i'll start just by talking about my thoughts on the squire p bass now and how it's kind of changed what i've discovered during that time so when you're buying an affordable bass like this one of the things you might want to know is you know is it going to last over time is it still going to be a durable workhorse after a couple of years now being a year and a half in i have things that i love and don't love about this bass so just reminding you everything about this bass is stock apart from the pickups the pit guard and the knobs <laughs> The machine heads on this bass, by my standards anyway, which are probably quite bad, are absolutely fine. I don't play this bass as often as I used to. Every time I pick it, every day, every time I pick it up, it always seems to be in tune, sounding good, feeling good. If you're getting a bass that is warping loads and getting out of tune loads and the action's going all over the place, and, constantly you're always having to do and you're constantly having to set it up after putting it down then that's the sign of a bad bass and I don't get that with this bass oh I forgot one more thing I changed about it was sanding off that lacquer on the back of the neck I can't remember if I mentioned that in my original video but that is something that drastically drastically improves the feel of this bass it feels so smooth to play after just sanding off uh, a little bit of the lacquer on the back of the neck oh one of the nicest feeling necks that I've got, and this one feels pretty good. So one thing that over time I haven't really enjoyed is the fretboard on this bass. I think the Indian Laurel looks fantastic, but it gets dry very quickly. Drier than a nun's, I wish I'd given it a bit of treatment before filming this video. You might be able to see that it doesn't look quite dry and it feels a bit dry as well. That's one thing I don't think it's great about this bass and that's something that I've discovered over time. One of the things that I kind of regret doing in this bass and you're gonna hate me in the comments because a lot of love for these pickups is changing the pickups. Um, I could just change them back or get some new ones but changing these pickups kind of made me fall out of love with the bass a little bit over time. I didn't connect with it as well anymore um, which is sad when you do that to a bass and you make these changes and you want to improve it and it doesn't quite go the way that you want. But whilst I was kind of, but whilst playing this bass with some round wounds, I kind of thought to myself, I feel like these pickups would sound good, although not maybe aimed towards that market. It might sound good with some flats on there. I, w I wanted a bass to put flats on and to be my flats bass. So that's inspired me to dive deeper into the world of flats. And loads of people in the comments on that video and videos moving forward are showing their love for flats. So I thought I'd join that party. On this bass now are some roto sounds. Now I know that Labella are kind of the go-tos 
but they're expensive. When I was trying things out, I didn't want to dive into the deep end, get the best ones and, and not like it, you know, they're, they're very expensive. So I thought I'd go kind of more on the affordable range, but I'd heard that these strings are kind of the next go-tos and they're a good price. So I've got to that stage in the bass, I've put some flats on it, let's have a listen to how it sounds. This video is structured slightly differently in that I'm just going to jam, go where the fretboard takes me. Because that is one thing that I really do enjoy about uh, using flats on a P bass, it kind of inspires totally different playing. Uh, I'm going to keep it to mainly finger style and uh, a bit of slapping. I know this is very off brand for me, but I'm not going to do any pick playing in this video. So I've changed the pickups, I've put some flats on it. I think, yeah, this is fine. This is this sounds pretty cool. The pickups I think adapt quite well. Um, but I want something more. I want to take one step further. So I've added a bit of foam underneath that bridge. Now this is nothing special. This is just actually what came in uh, a pedal uh, box that I had. And so I just cut it down a little bit and popped it under there to mute the strings a little bit, to give, give it, to give it that even more vintage sound. <laughs> My camera kindly just overheated, so it stopped filming. So don't know where I was, don't know where I am, don't know who I am. So then, before we take a listen to this bass with the foam underneath the bridge, I want to talk quickly about some other components that I don't quite get along with with this bass. Standard size knobs don't fit. And I refused to go and buy the EMG ones. I was just like, no, if you're, why wouldn't you provide them? Apparently they provide them in the PJ set, but just not in the P set, which I think is ridiculous. Um, so I was like, no way, I'm not gonna buy them. But a viewer of the show very kindly reached out to me and sent me some that he'd 3D printed. And I think they look so cool. Now I'm the owner of three white knobs. I find that the hardware around the, um, around the pots and the knobs comes loose really easy. So I'm always having to tighten that 
and it's a bit annoying when I've got to pull the knob off, tighten it and put it back on quite frequently. With that out of the way, let's have a listen to this bass with the foam slipped under the bridge. <laughs> So let me know in a comment down below which you prefer, with or without foam, what mods have you done to your Squire bases out there, and what else do you think I should do? Personally I think the foam looks cool but I would like to get a bridge cover to go over that. I won't get a pickup cover because it kind of gets in the way of where I position my fingers a little bit and I find and I love the look of the split coil pickup so I think I might get a bridge cover to go on there just to add to that vintage look. Maybe swapping the pickups out to something more vintage inspired as well. Whilst I do think the EMGs sound good, they're a little bit thin. I want something that's a bit warmer for these flats to really hit that sweet spot within the tonal spectrum. And the original ones are vintage voiced but maybe some Fender Custom Shop ones in there would sound rough. All of the little flaws aside, this bass is still fantastic a year and a half later, and I'm still finding excuses to keep it in my arsenal and pick it back up again. Whether it's gonna stay there any longer, it will be going though if I find a Japanese P bass at a good price. I can't justify having two P basses, um, and I kinda want to put flats on my Gretsch short scale. I'm not really sure what the future holds for this bass. I'm not really sure what the point of this video was, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. <laughs> Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see whether I do get that Japanese P bass or not. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.